In this video, I'm going to show you how you can speed up a Next.js application by deploying it on the MoveWeb XDN. We're going to first start by adding the XDN to an existing Next.js app. Then we're going to run the XDN locally. We'll add some caching, then add prefetching to make navigation between pages as fast as possible. And finally, deploy it on the XDN. Let's get started. I have an existing Next.js app, Next application, uh, and I'll run it here uh, just by doing npm run dev. So this is a simple little two-page application that I built. Uh, it's meant to represent a blog. Um, it uh, lists the available posts, and then you can click on a post to see the details. I've injected a little bit of slowness in the API requests that drive these screens to show how we can overcome that with the XDN. So uh, a bit about the layout of the application. There's an index page uh, and it uses get server side props to fetch the list of posts from a, a mock API. And then there's a page to display the post details and it also uses get server side props. So to start working with the XDN, first we would run npm install global XDN CLI. I've already done that, so I don't need to do that. Uh, and then we would run XDN init. So XDN init looks at your project, it figures out what framework you're using, and it adds the requisite dependencies for deploying your app on the XDN. So in addition to installing the dependencies that we need to deploy our Next.js application on the MoveWeb XDN, it also added a few files. It added a service worker. Uh, this uses the XDN prefetch library to cache both static assets like JavaScript and CSS, as well as prefetch dynamic assets like API requests to make page navigation on the client side uh, instantaneous. If you don't have a next config, it will add one for you. Uh, if you do, then you need to add these two plugins uh, with XDN, which ensures that it will be packaged properly for deployment on the XDN, and with Service Worker that uh, uses the next offline plugin to inject the Service Worker into the browser. Um, there's an XDN config file. I won't go into that too deeply, but this contains options for configuring the XDN. And the most important thing that it adds is a routes file. So this is the heart of all of your CDN as code logic on the XDN. Here it just has two simple routes, one to serve the service worker, and then it uses a next routes middleware provided by the XDN next package that automatically adds all of the page routes in your next application to the XDN. So now, in order to run the XDN locally, what I'll do is I'll just run uh, XDN run. It also added some scripts so that if you'd like to, to run the XDN, uh, either to start, build, or deploy your app, you can do that uh, via NPM scripts as well. Okay, so now I'll open up uh, the app in a new browser tab, and it looks exactly the same, but now it's running behind the XDN. So what I can start to do is add caching behavior to my app. So in order to do that, I'll go back to the router and let's cache the server-side rendered result for the home page. So in order to do that, I need to add a route for my home page uh, that specifies caching behavior. So I'll do that uh, above the next routes plugin here. So what I've done is I've declared a get route for the home page, uh, and I'm using the cache function to specify that the result should not be cached in the browser, but it should be cached at edge for one hour. So in order to see that in action, 
what I can do is run the XDN with the dash dash cache option. This is going to simulate the edge caching locally. So I'm going to start a new incognito window here and I'll load up the application with caching enabled. So you can see the first request is obviously a cache miss, but you can see by looking at the response headers here, the XXDN timing header says OC equals cached. What this means is that uh, OC stands for outer edge cache. We only have one cache in development, which is the outer edge cache, and the response was written to the cache. So now if I refresh, what you'll see is the uh, response is now a hit. So furthermore, if I go and let's say click on one of these posts, you'll see the API request for post one. This was uh, a pass. So what this tells me is that it's not caching this response because I haven't added a cache route for this yet. So if I was to go to this uh, request again, it would always be a pass. So let's add caching for the post page uh, as well. So the way we can do that is I'll add a similar route here for uh, posts. So same parameters, we're not gonna cache it in the browser, we're just gonna cache it at edge. This is the server-side rendered result. And then since we're using get server-side props, I can add a route for the API request. So in Next.js that takes a certain shape. It's always of this format, underscore next slash data, and then a uh, version number, and then the rest of your page route. So in this case, posts ID, and then dot JSON. So this one we're gonna cache in the browser using the service worker for an hour and we're also gonna cache it at edge. And for good measure, I'll do the same thing with the home page, uh, get server side props as well. So let me just add that. Um, so this is the URL for the home page, it's just slash index.json. So uh, in this case, I'm actually matching all methods. I don't really need to do that. I can just switch these to the gets since I'm not gonna be doing any posts or puts or anything like that to those URLs. So now I'll save that. Um, changes automatically take effect and you'll notice as I saved it, it says that it cleared the cache. So whenever you make changes to your application code, it's gonna clear the cache locally so that you don't see stale results. So I'll go and let's refresh this page and now we should see that it has been cached and if I refresh, then we'll see that it's a hit. So if I go back to the home page, now it requested uh, the index home page, that's now cached. So if I was to navigate back there a second time with the API, that's gonna be a cache hit. Uh, likewise, if I go to, let's say page one here, uh, this should now be written to the cache. If I go back and then let me just clear, I'll go to page one. Now you notice that response is like lightning fast. Uh, that's because it's a cache hit. Okay, so now we've added caching. Uh, let's go ahead and add some prefetching. So the idea behind prefetching is the XDN can prefetch all of the links that are on the screen. In other words, those links that the user is likely to navigate to. So that happens behind the scenes. It happens with low priority. Uh, it won't block other network requests like requests for images or requests for navigation. But the aim is to populate the cache in the browser with all the content that the user may navigate to so that that navigation is instantaneous. Um, all those extra prefetch requests, you might think are gonna add a bunch of traffic to the origin servers, especially if you're running API servers, uh, those would be a lot of extra requests. Well, that's actually not the case because the XDN shields the origin from all this extra traffic. It'll only serve prefetch requests if the response is cached. Otherwise, it'll return a 412 status, which the browser will just ignore. So let's add prefetching to the index page. Um, the way that we do that is we need to import a component called prefetch from the XDN React library, and then we add that inside of any next link to prefetch the page that that link points to when the link is scrolled onto the screen. Uh, in order for prefetch to work, you have to specify the pass href prop on the link so it knows what href to prefetch. Um, 
or you could specify the actual URL to prefetch in an optional prop here. If you're using get server side props, then you don't need to specify a URL. It can just figure it out by convention. So I'll add um, my prefetch um, component here, and then uh, let's go to a new incognito window and uh, let's load the homepage. So you'll see what happened is there's a bunch of failed requests here. What it's trying to do is go out and prefetch all of the links that are on the page. So it's like the first six links. But the back end, because none of those pages have been hit yet since we uh, cleared the cache, uh, it's returning 412s. So if a user was to navigate to, let's say, the, the first page here, that's going to put this page in the cache. So you'll see, if you look at the response from the service worker here, you'll see it's now put in the cache. So imagine I'm a different user coming in now. I'll clear the, the browser cache to simulate this. And I land on the home page. So you can see all but one of the prefetches failed. And the one that didn't is the one that I previously visited. So since that's in the edge cache, it can now be served uh, uh, as, a, as a prefetch. So if I click this link now, it's going to be a very quick transition because that data is in the browser's uh, cache. And you can see that if you go to application cache storage, uh, you can see post one in the prefetch cache here. So if I click this link, it's just a you know instantaneous transition. Okay. Should also point out that you can see statistics about cache hits and misses in your console as well. Um, so that's there for debugging purposes. Uh, lastly, I'm going to deploy this application on the XDN. So in order to do that, very easy. You just do XDN deploy. And it will use the name from the package JSON as the uh, application that you're going to uh, create in the Move Web Developer Console. Uh, I'm going to deploy it to a um, specific team uh, that I have, which uh, is called the platform team. So I'll do that here. And since this is the first time that I've deployed this project, uh, it'll tell me since this is the first deployment, uh, it might take a little bit longer. Um, so it's got to go out and, and set up a, a bunch of things. That takes probably an extra 20 or 30 seconds. Now it'll do a production build of my app. Okay, so now I should be able to see the site running live on the move of XDN. Okay, so there we go. Uh, and we should see basically the same caching behavior as we saw locally. Uh, if I refresh this page, you should see that uh, OC equals hit. So we're getting a cache. Uh, and then we see a bunch of um, rejected prefetches because no one's actually visited any of these pages. I'm the only user of the site. But if I go and visit one, um, you'll see that the response will be cached. And then if I go back and let's say I'll visit this page in my incognito window, then you should see it. Uh, able to prefetch that one page that we've visited and that transition is really fast because it's now a production build of our application. So if you want to make all of your transitions that fast, uh, try deploying your Next.js app on the move of XDN.